Hey everyone, this is Kevin from Kevin's Micro Fleet. Today I'm coming to you with another Micro Galaxy Squadron review. We're going to be taking a look today at the Amazon exclusive, the ATAT Endor version. So this actually came in its own individual shipper box, which I'll actually show as we get into the review. But uh, I'll also take a look at the packaging of this actual item. We'll take a look at the vehicle itself, at the figures, at the accessories, and then we'll do a comparison. Let's go ahead and dive into the review. So we want to go ahead and start here with the packaging. So uh, I've got the two different items here. So this is the actual shipper box that it came in from Amazon, as well as the actual item, which we'll take a look at the packaging and everything here in just a minute. So with this shipper box, this actually did not come inside of another package that was just shipped exactly like this. So I was able to remove the shipping label off of it. And then a couple other things you can see right here where the box had damages, it took off another one of the stickers. So if you wanted to have this uh, shipped in the shipper box like this, you can get it. It still seems to be in pretty good shape. Uh, you can also ask to have this box uh, that actually has the item in it shipped inside of another package so that way this box stays in pristine shape as well. Uh, overall it, it still looks really good so I didn't run into any specific problems but you can see here it's got the description of the actual item, it's got the item number on there and then uh, as you turn it around it just says Jazzwares here on the back. It did come with a little uh, thank you inside of it so it came with this guy which just basically says thank you. And um, so that was that. Now, beyond that, you then actually have the packaging itself. So uh, now we can kind of slide this over and take a look at it. So here is the actual outside of the packaging. So you can see you get a bunch of different stuff with this. It has the lights and sounds on it like we have with the other one. It's got the little picture down here on the bottom, number 90, the at, -AT Walker Endor. You do get a bunch of different figures with this one, Vader, Luke, you get the pilot, a uh, scout trooper, and then you get a couple of stormtroopers as well. So you also get actually the chance to see the item with all of the weathering on it that's on there, which we'll take a look at here in a minute once we get this out of the packaging. As we turn it to the side, you get a chance to see it actually does have nice box art here with the uh, the AT, at and with an Endor background. And then as we keep turning it around and you get a chance to see the back here that has all of the different accessories, uh, and all of the different play features of this. The one thing that I really like that they do is they do actually change the graphics relative to the actual item. So you can see here, we've got the speeder bike port, which you have on the standard version, but now it has the brown speeders versus the white speeders, which you would have in the Hoth version. It has all the lights and sounds and everything. It's got the removable piece on it. It's got the winch down there. You get your little cutout if you want that. Cockpit opens and it rotates all over the place. Then we can turn this around to see this side. It just shows a little bit more of what's going to happen when you open it. And then here is the underside if you wanted to get that and get the UPC for whatever reason. But this is an Amazon exclusive, so you can only get it on Amazon. Um, so let's go ahead and take this thing out of the packaging and we'll uh, look at all of the different uh, features. Okay, so here this is outside of the box. Um, so uh, there is one other thing with the packaging that I do want to show, which is actually the cardboard backing that they have um, behind the vehicle. And it looks really nice. So I like that we got a couple ATSDs in there in the background. It's got nice uh, graphics in there for the actual AT-AT, -AT, as well as just the forest scene. Looks really, really nice. So I, I do like that they add these in here as a display piece. The other thing that comes inside the box is actually the instructions. So we can see here if we open this thing up, shows where to put the batteries in. So it takes three AAA batteries, you put them in underneath. A uh, really clever way to do that where it's screwed in actually underneath the actual um, uh, hull of the body. You get all of the accessories that it shows here. And then as we open this thing up, it then talks about all of the different features that you have with it, um, and then putting all the figures in it and all of that stuff. So that is that. Okay. So now let's go ahead and start with uh, the accessories. So this one, this Endor version, does come with this uh, um, like grappling hook, which you get with the other. Um, AT, AT, which is 
kind of odd that they have this with this specific version, but you know, it is what it is. So that is that. Um, and then you also get your speeder bike with the stand. So this is just your common um, Scout class stand. You've got the one peg here on the front as well as the one on the side to be able to zoom this uh, speeder bike around. And then obviously with the speeder bike as well. So this is the brown version. Um, so there are two other versions of this. There is a battle damage version, which has like a little mark on here, like it was shot. And then there's the scout class from series one, which is a very light brown, kind of like a beige-ish color. So then if we go ahead and get into the figures, We'll start first with your stormtroopers. So you get four stormtroopers with this one. You get two of them that are actually holding blasters and two of them that are not. They have done a better job with these. The progression of these stormtroopers has improved from series to series in terms of the amount of paint application that they have. These guys do look just a little sad, unfortunately, with just the way that their eyes are on there. Um, but I'll show you just a comparison here. So here was series one stormtroopers with the troop transport so you can see it just looks like they have sunglasses on really no paint application and then in series three we get the stormtrooper with the e-web uh, cannon so you can see there he's got just a little bit more paint on his face he's got the the lenses and then he's got also this part there on his mask and then now on the most recent version now we're getting uh, again even more um, detail in the paint application. They're doing just a little bit more on the top of that, uh, that band on the top of his helmet and, uh, yeah, kind of getting the same there on the back of the legs. And again, here's a comparison of it to the series one. Huge improvement as they've gone through it. I would say for whatever reason, this guy just, again, looks a little bit sad with the way his eyes are on there. Um, and then you also get the one that actually has the blaster in his hand. So there you can see with the blaster, it looks pretty nice. I would say overall a great sculpt. Great to be able to have one with actually uh, something other than just the hands. And then if we go ahead and we move on to the other figures, you get um, first your scout trooper. So your scout trooper here, uh, this is just your standard scout trooper. So um, this is very similar to the series uh, four version of the scout trooper. Uh, you can see some pretty decent paint detail on there as well as on the mask, on the pants. They do a fantastic job here with the sculpting on it. The paint really does bring out a lot of the great details. Then you get your uh, at, at driver. So here is what he looks like. Again, same kind of thing. It's pretty amazing, actually, that they're starting to get this uh, Imperial cog there on the helmet. So they're doing that with uh, what's called tampo printing, where they actually take like a little rubber piece and just smush it right on there. So great job there with the sculpt, as well as the different paint application for his rest of the uniform. And then we get to our Jedi Luke. So here is Jedi Luke. Um, pretty good here in terms of the sculpt. There's not really a whole lot to him. He's got a lightsaber on his waist. He's got the glove on his hand. And so I did want to compare this to the Jedi Luke from Chase from the series one. And you can see about the same in terms of sculpt. There's not a whole lot different there. Maybe just a little bit of a change in terms of the color of his hair and the paint application on him. Here is our Vader comparison. So you've got the Vader here with this Endor version versus Darth Vader from series one. And they did a really nice job here with the paint application on the newer version of the Vader. So you can actually see the paint um, application there on the top of his, um, his uniform here. He's got the gray on there, which looks really nice and also painted some of these little panels here on the front of his uniform versus the uh, Series 1 version, which just has basically his belt painted, and that's it. So again, I would say from a figure perspective, the figures have continued to improve. 
as they've gone through uh, the series. It's been very cool to see that happen. And so let's go ahead and just dive right into the actual vehicle itself. So starting with the outside here, um, they did a really nice job with the weathering. So I like that they use this specific color wash on it. It does look more, you know, kind of like dirty that it would be in a, in a, a, a forest type of environment. You actually do get some rust streaks on here. You get some you get little blaster marks on it. And then you do get a lot of the green and the brown here, like it's tromping around through the forest in the mud. The green paint is um, pretty stark compared to the brown. The brown does look like, almost like it's airbrushed onto it um, because you can see the fading of it, which looks a little bit more, I guess, realistic. Um, compared to the green. The green does look like it's just kind of splashed on there. But overall, I still think the vehicle looks really nice. The other thing that we look at here from the front is you can see the actually the burn marks here on the front blasters, which is really nice. These blasters here on the side don't move. They're stationary. These guys are also stationary as well. And if we turn this around this way, you can see you get even more uh, blaster marks here on the side and even more of that rust streaking, which is really cool. I like that they added that in here as an added deco uh, benefit. Keep turning this thing around to the back and that is what the back looks like. So now if we go ahead and take a look at this from a feature perspective, um, here on the front, uh, we can open the cockpit. So this is one where you can see the cockpit really doesn't have any weathering on the inside of it. It's really all on the outside. So you get your two seats there for the pilots. You also get the one little hook here, which is really for general veers, which we get in the other version of the Hoth version of it. So that clicks closed and then we can move this thing around quite a bit. So you can hear there's some ratcheting in there as I do it, um, as it keeps going up and down. The one thing that is nice about this already, I can tell as I've started to move this thing around, the uh, the Hoth version has kind of this kick to the side with the head where it just wants to kick over this way like it was in the box. This one does not have that. This one seems to be sitting in here pretty nice, but you can move it up and down all around. Um, great versatility with that. As we take a look at the legs, the legs have tons of articulation to it. So you can go all the way out like this. You can come back this way until it hits this little bar and then that stops that. But you get articulation of both joints. It's got a ratcheting system. You can hear that ratcheting as I'm doing it. You do get the ratcheting here as well in this part of the foot. And that's basically it. Um, but all of the legs will do the same thing. So you can put this thing in lots of different poses um, as you're setting up your scenes if you want to do that. And then we have the uh, the internal component here, which this piece will remove. So there's, you can see there's like a little notch here and a notch there, as well as on the back of this plate right there to be able to hook this thing in place. And you can see again, once I remove this, the inside looks perfectly clean. So there really isn't any weathering on the interior versus what we're seeing on the outside. So this does have this little winch in here as well to be able to lower the speeder bike down. So you get this little guy here, which you can just turn this and that will pull the winch up. So mine as it was, as I opened it was uh, already unwound. So you can wind that up. Takes a minute, come on now. And uh, this is really designed to have the speeder bike on it, which is a pretty cool feature. I do like that they added in this extra little piece that is not super necessary to have in here, but it is pretty fun. Oh, that's about as far as that one's gonna go for right now. So then you also get uh, seating here for 10 different micro figure accessories. You can kind of stack them all up in there. I'll show you what that looks like in the Endor version as well. And then you get these little peg holes here to be able to put the speeder bikes in like we saw on the back of the packaging. 
Now, the other thing about this, and I mean, this is where you just keep adding more and more to this. From a play feature perspective, this does have the same lights and sound. The only thing that's unfortunate about this is it has the exact same lights and sound as you get with the Hoth version, which I'll go ahead and run through those. To really activate this, the thing you have to do first is push on this button on the side right here. That will start the engines up. You do get some lights in here as well, so you can see that. Then you get the walking sound. Which is a really cool feature. I do love that sound. And then if you push this button right here on the top, you get some of the other um, the other lights and sounds. Target, maximum firepower. And so that's where you get your general veers. You do get the lights here on the front that light up as well and it cycles through. Target, maximum firepower. Prepare to target the main generator. Full troops will debark for ground assault. And those are the different sounds that you get. There is a really cool power down sound effect, which will happen here in just a minute as I let this thing sit here. And again, I would say, you know, from an electronics perspective, I'm not gonna use this a whole lot with the electronics, so I'm not that worried about it. If this was something that you were concerned about in terms of playing with it, then yes, this is going to sound exactly like the Hoth version. It won't sound like an Endor version. The sound effects are still gonna be the exact same. And so here is what this looks like, again, compared. There is your power down sound. Let me go ahead and throw this guy in here. And so here is what they look like compared side to side. So you can obviously see the color is significantly different as well as all of the deco that's on the bottom, which you don't get with the one on the, on the left side with the Hoth version. So now here's what it looks like with this open. So this is what it would look like to have a lot more troopers in there as well as all of the speeder bikes. So I do have a couple three printed figures inside of there as well. You obviously get the Luke that hangs down here, which you can do with this version as well because it does come with that grapple. Um, there's no real need to do that though. And then again, here are the sound effects. Target, maximum firepower. Prepare to target the main generator. All troops will debark for ground assault. And there you go. So. Those are all of the sound effects. So now let's go ahead and do some measurements here. Um, and this thing again, is it's really big. So if we're measuring this thing from front to back, um, I'll kind of have to finagle this one. This is probably about a foot. Yeah, I would say so. Maybe 11 inches there from front to back. And then same thing here on the height, it's gonna be about go powering down it's about 11 inches tall as well and then uh, side to side is about call it three inches now obviously the other thing that I wanted to compare this to is the action flea version which you can see it's kind of like a kind of like a father and a child there <laughs> uh, or a parent and a child and so this uh, action flea version is very small this is not even five inches tall maybe five inches tall and then front to back is from the beginning of the laser cannons to the back is about five inches, five and a half inches. This one does come with a couple different figures. It comes with a, a pilot, um, an at, at pilot, which you can see there. And we'll do that one really quickly, compare him to this guy. So you can see, I would still say that Micro Galaxy Squadron 1 wins here in terms of the, the quality of the figure. And then you also do get a snow trooper in this as well. It's got a little thing that opens in here and snow trooper is, he's stuck back in there. But um, that is your action fleet version. And so uh, that sums up the comparison here as well as the review for the at, -AT Endor version. Um, this is a great vehicle. I think they did an awesome job here designing this and being able to have all the different play features that they did. You can get this again exclusively on Amazon. There is a link in the description below if you're interested in purchasing this, an Amazon affiliate link. If you do purchase off of that, 
Um, there are commissions that are earned on qualifying purchases, so I do appreciate the support of the channel. And if you liked it, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the video. Check out the link below for the Facebook group that I run with some friends from all over the world, other huge uh, collectors of Micro Galaxy Squadron and other micro toys. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next review.